inequalities in triangles. Exterior angle inequality theorem. Remember before we had the exterior angle theorem, which said angles 1 was equal to 2 plus 3. We now have a new one that is the inequality theorem. The inequality theorem tells us simply that angle 1 is bigger than angle 2. And angle 1 is also bigger than angle 3. This hopefully should make sense because when we learned before, angle 1 was equal to 2 plus 3. Therefore, it must be logical that 1 must be bigger than 2 and 3 individually if it is equal to their sum. Let's answer a question here. Which angles are less than angle 14? So which angles are smaller than angle 14? As we look at the picture, we need to use things like the triangle inequality theorem. We know that 14, the angle I circled here, has to be bigger than angles 4 and 11. That has to be true for sure because the exterior angle inequality theorem. Those are the two fairly obvious ones because of that theorem. Now we also know that 11 and 9 are vertical angles. We just added another one. What else can we use? Well, if we look at this from a perspective of a bigger triangle, this triangle right here, 14 would be exterior to 2, and also the combination of 3 and 4. We now have two more that we could add in. It has to be bigger than 2, and it also has to be bigger than 3. Now the last part is probably the trickiest part about this, and that is we need to use a new triangle with a new angle. We have this angle 11 right here, and if I make my triangle be this triangle that I'm looking at, and 11 is my exterior angle, that would mean that 7 and 6 have to be bigger than 11. 11 is the exterior angle, and it would be bigger than 6 and 7. We've already decided at the beginning of the problem that 11 was smaller than 14. So we started with angle 14 being the exterior angle, And we know from the exterior angle theorem that 14 has to be bigger than 11 and 4. But since it has to be bigger than 11, and we can see that 11 has to be bigger than 6 and 7, through the transitive property, we know that 14 would also have to be bigger than 6 and 7. Let's try another one. Which angles are greater in measure than angle 5? We're asking which angles are bigger than 5. Pause this for a moment and see if you can answer that question. Again, we are looking at for, for angles bigger than 5. If I trace angle 5, that is part of the triangle I just made in yellow. If you notice, 17 would be the exterior angle, which would have to be bigger than 5 and 11. We could also look at it from the perspective of angle 12. Angle 12 would also have to be bigger than 4 and 5. That means 12 and 17 are both bigger than angle 5. 12 is vertical to 10. Now we have another one. I'm going to take the yellow triangle away. And we're going to start over again. But this time, I'm going to look at it to, from the perspective of 
angle 16. Angle 16, if we trace it out like this, that would be the exterior angle which has to be bigger than 10 and 12. We now know that 16 is bigger than 10 and 10 is bigger than 5, therefore 16 is bigger than 5. If we use the same logic on the other side and trace this triangle out, we see that 15 is our exterior and it would be bigger than 12 and 7. That means 15 is bigger than 12 which is bigger than 5. We now have angles 10, 12, 15, 16, and 17 all bigger than angle 5. And based on the information in this uh, problem, that is all we can say. 10, 12, 15, 16, and 17 are all bigger than angle 5. Here's a little statement, actually three little statements. The biggest angle is opposite the biggest side. Notice the blue words go together. We have the biggest angle is opposite the biggest side. Then we can make this statement again. The middle angle is opposite the middle side. And lastly, the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. What that's telling us is when we open up an angle, as we get a bigger and wider angle, the side that connects the endpoints also has to get bigger. Here's a demonstration of it. If we look at the picture, if I talk about angle BAC, so I'm talking about angle B to A to C, we can call this angle A. If I increase angle A, meaning I move point B so that angle A is now 93 degrees, its side is 10.2 centimeters long. If I make that angle smaller, in other words, bring it closer together, the angle is now 31 degrees, notice the side is now 5.2 degrees. It has gotten considerably smaller. The smaller I make BAC, the smaller the length for connecting B to C for the sides. Same thing would be true for A, B, C. So if we call it angle B at the top, right now it's 98 degrees, and the side opposite it, its side CA, is 8.9. If I move C over, making angle ABC smaller, notice the distance from C to A also gets smaller. The wider the angle, the longer the side opposite. That is what these statements are saying. The biggest angle is opposite the biggest side. The middle angle opposite the middle side, and the smallest angle opposite the smallest side. These also can be read, written or read conversely or flipped. The biggest side is opposite the biggest angle. The middle side is opposite the middle angle and the smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. Big to big, middle to middle, small to small when we're comparing the angles and the sides opposite them. That's the end of today's lesson. If you have any questions, Please bring them back to class and ask.